The book is called A Fire and Sword and it's published by Headline Review and the author is Simon Scarry. Simon, welcome. Tell me why you've chosen historical fiction as, as a genre. Um, frankly, it's because that's where all the best stories are. Um, <laughs> you know, you can, I mean, it, it just every time I seem to go away on holiday, whether it's to someone like Crete or it could be to Syria or something like that, I've always found that I've come away from the holiday with about three or four stories that I could tell. Mm -hmm. you know, and if, um, for example, earlier this year we went to um, Rhodes, Syria and Egypt and um, the ideas book by the end of that holiday was kind of about, you know, that high. And Do you just, go everywhere with a notepad? I try not to, but it just happens. You know, if I don't have one, I go out and buy one. Um, and in Rhodes, it was just the story of the Knights of Malta. Um, they became the Knights of Malta eventually, mm -hmm. the Order of St. John. And um, when you, the first thing that strikes you when you get to Rhodes, for example, is just this fantastic sort of medieval fortifications around the town. And they're largely intact. And the old town is, is largely intact as it would have been mm -hmm. during the siege. And you just look at this, and then you sort of read about the history of the siege and so on, and you think, this is just, you know, dynamite. So just about every holiday <laughs> seems to yield this. I'm not so sure that, you know, the family um, are very appreciative. Because, <laughs> I'm sure not. You know, I mean, Napoleon, I think, was a hero of mine from a, a very early age, mm -hmm. um, when I got one of those kind of airfix kits that you could make up of Elizabeth Cromwell or whatever, and I got Napoleon. And um, when I got that, I thought, well, OK, <laughs> I've done the kit find out about the guy. And it was just astonishing what he managed to sort of fit into a relatively short lifetime. And on the back of that, of course, it leads you into the whole sort of Napoleonic War. Mm -hmm. And then I encountered uh, Wellington. And again, you know, it was an extraordinary life. But the thing that I hadn't realized until um, when I put sort of two and two together, they're actually born in the same year. And they were both from island aristocracies. And they were both shaped by the experience of the French Revolution. Oh, how interesting. Um, one, of was obviously Napoleon growing up in a, in a political culture where virtually mm -hmm. everything was possible. So he rose from, as I say, minor you know, island aristocracy to emperor mm -hmm. of France and ruler of a huge empire. And with Wellington, of course, the, he had the, kind of the opposite problem. He was born into a situation that was socially static, politically static, and so on. And he had to fight his way through all of that um, with his undeniable abilities in order to uh, rise up to command the British army. And it's very much about how being in a revolution and not being in a revolution can kind of affect your chances. What's it like trying to inhabit real characters rather than creating them from nothing? It's, it's, it's a challenge, but it's also um, a real enlightenment in a way, because when you read the histories and you, and you, you know, research their letters and things like this, um, you get a sense of what they would, you know, how they are presented to the public. And you have to... Uh, as a historian, you're only allowed to infer so much mm -hmm. about your characters because you have to document, you have to prove, yes. footnote, and all the rest of it. But if you're writing fiction, you get an opportunity to kind of slide behind the facts. Can you give a little resume of the plot, well, such one, as it is? Well, um, this takes us from Napoleon's coronation as emperor um, up until, um, that's his story, that's up mm -hmm. until his um, invasion of Spain and the replacement of the, uh, the French royal family with right. his brother. I mean, he's busy doing this all around Europe, sort of... Uh, finding the plum jobs for the family. Mm -hmm. um, and from Wellington's um, point of view, it's from the time he returned from India. Entry. And in this book, he, he sort of ends up in Spain, and it's the, be, the beginning of the Peninsula Campaign. So obviously the fourth book, is, which is going to tie it all together and end at Waterloo. I don't want to spoil it. Right, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so we know how that ends. Um, you know, it is going to be about the, um, the retreat from Moscow mm -hmm. and it's maybe the Waterloo Campaign and the Peninsula War. So Now you're quite prolific. And you also write incredibly chunky novels, don't well, you? Well, I like to kind of think of them as a sort of fitness program as well as a good <laughs> Well, exactly. So, a third yeah. is a worker. Are you very rigid about your working schedule, do you? Um, no. I'm only rigid when my editor gets on the phone. Oh, says, really? Do you realise deadlines you know, in a month and a bit's time? And, uh, so how many words a day? It depends. Um, these are different because I'm constantly having to check facts and okay. you know, make sure everything's absolutely right and so on. That takes the best part of about um, eight eight months to actually write. That's having done all the research. Okay. Um, the Roman books, um, because I've all already done the mm -hmm. research, I just had brilliant Latin teachers at school who just kind of filled my head full of all the essential facts. Those stories kind of just roll out at high speed because they're just you know they are breakneck kind of books. So it's uh, a lot quicker. So I can do those in about sort of three to four months. Well, we've got to, and, and then next we've got the last one in this series mm -hmm. to, to look forward to. And what, what's that called? That's going to be called um, Fields of Death, because, you know, this is, it's going to be the book with the highest okay, casualty yeah, rate, yeah. essentially. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> well, I look forward to it. Thank you very much. Si that was Simon Scarry talking about his novel Fire and Sword.